Today, I'm going to give you an overview of how I set up my Flash Plan Explorer 600 flashes in my studio all the time. <laughs> Monique here of Silver Paw Studio and founder of Pro Pet Photog. And I'm putting more lighting videos up here for you. So be sure to check the playlist. What I've been using for many years now is two of the Flashpoint 600s, Explore 600s. So what I wanna do is tell you a little about the gear, a little about the settings and how I use them, and then we'll be seeing some footage of little Juniper who I photographed today. All right, so let's pull this flash up. So I have two Flashpoint Explore 600s. Ah, we're gonna get, we're gonna get cozy. <laughs> I have two Flashpoint Explorer 600s. This is basically the same as Godox brand. These are from Adorama. These are, you know, really good middle of the line studio lights. I would say these are between, you know, Alien Bees were kind of down here for me for a long time and Pro Photos just out the roof. <laughs> but Godox and these, um, Flashpoint are really good. So that's what I have here. This is a 600, there's 400, there's 200s. That's just watt hours. And what I like to do is not use my flash at 100% power all the time. And having two of these in the studio, I can have these a lower power, which means they'll last longer. So even if you don't think and you need 600 watt, you know, hours, you need to consider that. Like you don't wanna be 100% power at your lights all the time. It will burn them out really quick. Okay, so I've got two of these and I've got the Flashpoint R2 Pro. This is the little transmitter for Flashpoint that goes on top of my Sony. This is a Sony A1 with the 2470 lens that I always use here in the studio. I mean, if I can get away with using my 7200, I will, <laughs> but pretty much this is the lens I use here in the studio. So those are the two main pieces of equipment plus the modifiers. So you can see, let me grab, let me grab the modifier I took off of this flash for you. Now, you can use these flashes without a modifier. I've bounced them off ceilings and walls, but it's really nice to have something to put in front of the light source to control where it goes. And I just use these umbrella style, which is the great thing about these flash point is there is an umbrella slot, which not all lights have. So this is just like an umbrella. There we go. And if you can see inside there, oh, maybe you can't, uh, there's a silver lining. And so with these, and then they come out this diffusion panel. So you'll, your light will flash into the umbrella and back at your subject. You can get soft boxes, lanterns, all kinds of modifiers. So that's what I have equipment wise for lighting besides my speed light. I do, I think I got my speed light out. <laughs> speed light is also flash point, which is great. And I did that on purpose so that this controller will work with all of these lights. I don't have to have a separate controller transmitter when I go out on location with my speed light. And I will take these on location as well. Okay, so what do we got? We have the lights, we have the transmitter, we have the modifiers. Pretty simple so far. All of these, you can get all kinds of different accessories and things, but that's what we have. One of the things about the flash is that it's battery operated. So on this flash, here, we'll move in closer. Ooh, let's do a little tour of the flash itself, okay? Right here is where you can check your battery level. You can also check it on the LCD screen here, but you'll want to make sure your battery is always charged. To take off the battery, this is loud, sorry. 
there is a little switch here and you slide it up. So that switch, pull it in, slide it up. And then you need to charge it with the charger that comes with it. And here's the port right here. So make sure that these are charged every time you go out and the battery does last a really long time. Even when I did a four hour photo session and I wasn't using a modifier, these are almost, these are pretty close to full power. At, if you've seen my video about the Santa pictures, I didn't use a modifier and the batteries lasted the whole four hours. I did turn them off if we had big gaps in the people coming in, but I think that's pretty darn good. Can you use AC power? Yes, but you need to buy a separate piece. Okay, so really nice. No cords, no cables. I love to take this to clients' homes because I don't have to plug in. We have a lot of older homes in kind of the old town district and you don't know what you're gonna get for an outlet. So this has been awesome at client homes and at businesses, where I use it at businesses. Okay, as promised, let's do a little tour. Hello. <laughs> so you're gonna turn it on right here. Okay, there's our little LCD screen. Ooh, and you can see right here is the battery level again. Yeah, all right. So what you're gonna see here is that we've got it in wireless mode. That is so it can talk to the transmitter back and forth on the camera. And then we've got, this is the group and the channel. So this is just a label for your this flash, this is flash A. They call it a group, but flash A, all right? And then channel is has to do with your Wi-Fi. So you're on, we're on channel two. Doesn't really matter what channel you use, okay? Just pick a channel and have all the lights that you're using on the same channel. Where this comes in handy is if you're at a group photo shoot and a lot of people have the same light, change the channel. But just make sure everybody's on the same channel. Doesn't matter which one, there's a bunch. So the A just denotes this particular flash. That's, this is A flash. I like to use my flash in manual mode because that's just the way I am. So I choose the strength of the output of the light. Right now you can see at this session it was 1 8 power. And honestly, I should have brought it down. Instead, I just changed the settings on my camera. So we've got that and that's it. <laughs> So that's what I always have these set at, and I change this, the flash output from the transmitter. What? Yeah, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, but this is how you can go through all of these. Mode, multi if you have a few flashes, manual, and usually this will have a TTL if you have TTL type available. Okay, menu is a whole kinds of things. I do turn off the beep. Dogs and cats hate the beep. Ooh, don't leave the beep on. So go through this and just see, um, you'll need to have it on slave. So that's the menu. We're just gonna go through the really basics today, okay? Um, this is if you're doing high speed sync, which we're not gonna talk about. This is, you can't tell, but your modeling lamp. There's three levels on this particular model. I don't use that because it takes all the battery. <laughs> I can use my overheads enough to not spoil the image, but still focus so I don't use modeling lights, typically. Um, and then up here, that just cycles through some different screens. And then we have that group channel again. So if we wanted to change this light, what do we have it at? Were we on? Okay. We want this one on B. B. Okay. Group B, that's it. And then this is for changing the settings. So if I scroll up and down, I can manually change the settings here. That's fine. If it's all out of whack, well, we can fix that with, <laughs> with the transmitter. Okay, so that's a really basic walkthrough of all the buttons on the LCD screen for this. Now you'll notice I have two, so let's look at the other one. And to turn these on and off, all you have to do is long press the on off button. 
It's off. It's on. Okay, let's straighten this out for you all. So you can see how now we have A. So the other one, I believe, was B. Where'd you go? Yeah. We put that one on B. This one's on A. It's still channel two. All the things are the same. Okay, I just have two of them. And I'll show you why in a second. All right. So that, if you want to do really basic, really like flat, even lighting, you can just set it to this. If you have the kind that has TTL, uh, which I thought this did, then you can use TTL. And TTL means through the lens and the flash will help you decide what the flash output will be. I like to decide myself, <laughs> so I don't use that. Let's take a look at my little controller here. So there's buttons on the side. The bottom one is the main power right here. The top one is for the power for the flash assist, the focus assist right here. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. And you can see, ah, look, everything coordinates to this. So we've got channel two. I have to keep pushing it because it goes to sleep in 90 seconds. We've got channel two. We've got our groups or our light names, A and B. And um, tip, my speed light is C. And that's it. <laughs> so pretty basic. Let me show you a little bit of the buttons on this. Again, we have on and off. Hope that's focusing okay. And we've got our modes. We can see everything all at once with this, but or each each individual one with this plus button. Okay, to change this light, all I have to do is press the button next to the A, and then change that it sets. And A will now be one sixteenth, and so will B. If I want to change B, I press B and scrolly scroll up and down. Let's do that separate opposite and set. And that syncs them. This button is to do your test flash. Ah, so if you're not sure if all the lights synced, maybe they're way off and about in your studio, uh, just push that button and everything will be the same. So let's see, we should have A at 16, 16th. Yeah, let's see. Yes, A is at 16th power and B is at 1 8th power. Done. Pretty simple, right? Oh, and now you'll see, once I use this trigger, there is a little letter S right here. And that means Sony. Now, one day I had Frank here and he was using his camera and flash setup. He also has Flashpoint with his controller like this. He has a Nikon. And we could not figure out why mine wasn't working. And we looked here and it had an N. It was connected to his transmitter. So if you're using this with a group of people, which I doubt you are, look for that little letter um, S and N. And you'll notice my, I use Sony, right? And so I will have an S at the end of mine because the pins are gonna line up right on the hot shoe of my Sony camera. So make sure you get the right controller for your camera. The lights don't matter for the camera brand, but the controller transmitter does. Um, let's see, anything else you need to know on here? Um, if you want to turn on your modeling lights separately, there's a little button here called Mod, and you can see the little clouds, and then you can turn them off. Again, I don't use them that often. All right, so there's really not much to this. When this is on my camera, let me stick it back on here, and I'm behind the camera and I'm taking pictures, I will do a light test first with my little Wiggles doll, and I'll get it pretty close. But as soon as people come in, I say, I'm just gonna do a light test really quick. Maybe their dog was bigger or smaller or darker or lighter than I expected. So I take a couple of frames and if I don't, if they're not quite where I want them, I can either change the settings in my camera, basically leave your shutter speed. Leave your shutter speed, but I can change the aperture around and I can change the ISO around. But I can also change these settings because again, I wanna save the flash the battery on that for the whole session. 
So if I'm looking at this and go, you know what? Gosh, 1 8 and 1 16 is just not enough power. I'm going to go to A and I'm going to say, uh, I want that to now be an eighth power. Now I'm going to go to B and I want them to be half the, as much as the other. And that's just my rule. I have one light half as bright as the other. Okay, so one might be on an eighth power, one might be on a sixteenth of power, and that works for me. I do a test flash, now that says B says sixteenth, and A says one eighth power. That's all you have to do. Press A, press B, scroll till you get the spots you want, and say set in the middle of the scroll, and there you go. That's it. That is really all you have to do. It is. It can be that easy. Are there other options? Are there other buttons? Are there other ways you can set this up? Yeah, but I want you to get going with your flash points immediately. And it's that's all you have to do. Now, what are my camera settings? <laughs> Usually YouTubers like me will say it doesn't matter. Why? Because what I'm, my environment and what I want to show up at the, as the end result will be different than what you will. But here's the starting point anyway. I like to get my ISO eh, fairly low. So let's take a look at Juniper's pictures. So for Juniper right here that was just in, cutie, I'm going to look at the settings and I had ISO 320. My uh, f-stop was up to f9 and my shutter speed was 1 over 160. Now my camera just goes up to 1 200th, 1 250. Check out your camera for flash sync settings, but that's typical, you know, um, 1 200th of a second. So pretty much set that, let it as keep it aside. My aperture is how busy those dogs are and how much depth of field I want. I don't do shallow depth of field in the studio. I don't need to, um, but you could, and then you can really lower your lights even more. So I had 1 60th, F9, ISO 320. And I had my flash output at 1 8th and 1 16th. Now, if I said, you know what, I need to conserve this battery a little bit more, this session's going long, make your lights a little dimmer, and then you can increase something else, like maybe your ISO. Say, you know what, I can actually get away with 400 ISO, drop the lights a little bit. Or maybe I don't need F9, I can do F7. Then you can conserve your light a little bit. So just make sure there is a give and take. If you are lessening the light on one thing, you're gonna to have to compensate for it here. If you're letting more light in here, you can dim the light here. There has to be that balance there. Now this is wireless. I can be all over the studio. I've been out on location doing this. It works like a dream. The one thing about this transmitter though that I'm gonna tell you right now is you need to have at least two sets of AA batteries. <laughs> I've got another set on the charger right now. Somehow it sucks the batteries even when it's turned off. So it does really suck batteries quickly is what I have found. You wanna make sure you have your AA batteries ready to go. If it's going to be a longer session, maybe you're doing a whole day of photography, have several, <laughs> several sets of batteries. Now, as far as where the lights are set up in my studio, I like things 45 and 45. And what you can see from the video of me photographing Juniper is with those shoot through umbrellas, my lights are turned the op opposite direction from the dog because that it's gonna flash into the umbrella and come back. And so I have them on either side of me, so like 45 degrees from me and from the subject. And then I will bring these up quite a bit and make them at about a 45 degree angle. Oh, maybe you can't see that. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> I'm out of frame here. I'm getting crowded. Ah, okay. So you can see I would have these lights 45 degrees up. So they're coming back down. Part of that is also for shadow. So you want to make sure those shadows fall behind the dog, uh, behind and down, not right behind them. That just looks terrible. And then it's, you're not sculpting their face and their fur and everything very well. So that is the very, very simple light setup is have two lights <laughs> and have them 45 up and 45 at an angle 
and then your subject's gonna be just right here in the studio space. If you only have one light, you can just put a reflector on the other side. That's it. Maybe you could put your speed light over there. There's a lot of different ways you can set up your lights, but I just really wanted to show you so basic. I do this all day. I'm 100% pro photographer. I've been doing this lighting. My clients like this nice, flat, even lighting. It really can show off the pets and show off the people, and it just works. It just works. So that's really all you need to do to work these Flashpoint Explore 600s with the R2 controller in a studio. All right, I hope that answers any questions you have about using this light in a very basic sense in the studio. Really try it. If you've got this equipment and you're scared to try it out, set it up. I have wiggles that helps me with all of my light tests. <laughs> and just fiddle. You're not gonna break it, trust me. Reset buttons are your friend. YouTube is your friend. Try all the different buttons because you're gonna need to troubleshoot. So do a whole bunch of different tests with these and get a feel for them. And then when you're out on location with a dog or cat or people, you'll know what to do. Yay, all right. Well, thanks for joining me on this lighting tutorial. If you liked this video, you will probably like this video about lighting as well. All right, as always, I wish you many woofs, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's.